Cinema 4D Release 19 introduces the LOD object. Levels of detail are commonly used in video games to keep frame rates high by only showing high polygon objects when they're close to the camera. You can now take advantage of that same strategy inside of Cinema 4D to more than double your viewport speeds in certain situations. What we have here is a perfect use case for the level of detail object. I've got a number of extremely high polygon assets that are all visible in the frame. And as I'm playing this back, I'm seeing that I'm getting about 20 frames per second. And this project is meant to be animated at 30 frames per second, which means I'm getting something less than real time. And so what I'm seeing in the editor is not what my render is going to look like. And that's usually a very bad thing when you're animating. However, if I go ahead and I activate my levels of detail objects, and I've already done that in a take here, I've got my column and all of my sculptures now active. When I play through, I'm now getting a frame rate somewhere in the order of 120 to 150 frames per second, depending on where we are in the frame. And that is a pretty incredible speed up. Now, this is not the same thing on the screen, because if you look at the objects in the foreground, they're incredibly high resolution, but as you get into the background, you will notice that they look uh, jagged and low polygon. That is the, the nature and the central trick of the level of detail object. But for situations where you can stand to have a lower level of detail in your editor, or when you're far away from an object, it's a huge speed advantage for high polygon objects. Let's take a look at this scene in a, a different style to make it a little bit clearer what's going on. At the very beginning here, I've got this sort of rich olive green color, and that is the highest resolution version of my object. Off in the mid-ground, I've got a low resolution, and then background, I've got these very low resolution objects. Now watch what happens to them as we move past them. The higher resolution objects are cycling onto the screen when we need them. So. How do you set something like this up? Well, it's actually pretty simple. I'm gonna go into a different scene file where I've prepared some different levels of detail. I've got uh, my crab object here, and I've also got a couple of lower resolution versions that I created with the polygon reduction object. You just drag your object in and use current state to object. And over here at the far end, I've created an ultra uh, abstract, ultra low polygon version, uh, which is probably what you'll want to use a lot of the time. So what I want to do is first get all of my levels of detail in the same location. So I'm just going to zero out their positions, and now they're all occupying the same space. And it is important that all of their axes be properly aligned uh, and, and in the same position so that when you animate, things behave as you would expect. Next, I'm going to select all of my levels of detail, and I'm gonna hold down Control and Option and add a level of detail object. Now, holding down those keys, added the LOD object and added them in as children automatically. You could, of course, manually drag those in. Pretty easy to do that. Now, as I look at my level of detail object and in the Object tab here, I've got it currently set to LOD mode children which means that each of these levels of detail is automatically being added in just by having a child object. And what I'm gonna do is change the criteria here from user LOD level to screen size V. And this is the technique that's used by a lot of the, the, the game engines to determine which object should be shown. It's looking at the vertical size of this bounding box in screen space, and as it gets smaller, it's switching to a lower level of detail. Now that I've got all of my different LOD levels, and as I dolly in and out, I can see what's happening, I want to adjust the points at which this is occurring. So if I dolly all the way out here to LOD 3, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to need this until it's really far away. I'm going to have a lot of objects in my scene. Next, as I'm getting closer, that's pretty good, and it's around this time where I'm going to want to have something with pretty reasonable fidelity. My lighting might become you know, important around here. So what I can do is I can click more or less where I want that border to be. So see this little dot right here? This indicates the current camera's position, and clicking and dragging there will select the closest and allow me to manipulate that. So now I'm cycling that off, and as I'm getting in tighter, 
it is automatically fading to the object that I want right here. And maybe I really only need this highest level of detail when I'm totally maxed out. So I'm just gonna take this very close to the maximum value there. And it's only when this is really, really tight in frame that I need that highest resolution. So that is how you very simply set up different levels of detail. Now, what if you don't wanna go through the trouble of modeling your own levels of detail? Well, what I can do is take my LOD object here and I've simplified it down to just one of the levels. And I'm gonna change the mode from children to simplify. And what simplify will do is it will take the topmost object and then it will allow you to create your own custom display mode. So I can change it from full objects to something like a convex hull or one of these other simpler modes. So I'm just gonna click out a couple, three different states that it can occupy. And I'm clicking below the bar to add these levels. So this is so that we can see these different options. There's decimated mode, and I'm just gonna have to dolly out so we can see what's happening here. Decimated will delete polygons until you've got no polygons left. And uh, it does this based on the ID or the order of your polygons. So uh, be careful there. If you've got a plane or a cylinder, it'll just happen in a very linear manner, which can be really great for motion graphics. Next up is the convex hull option. And the convex hull option will create a simplified sort of shrink wrap around your object. And last but not least is the bounding box mode, which will create an even simpler representation of your object that will display with the utmost of quickness. And uh, I guess we can add one more right here, which will be our null object mode. And you'll see that it is now replacing our object with a null when it is not visible. Now, if you just have this one object in your scene, you probably don't even need a level of detail object, but when you have multiple high resolution objects, a lot's going on, every little bit helps, and it's worth the effort to build up an LOD stack like this. Now, I just wanna show uh, one last use case, which is the same decimation show mode that I showed you, but just playing through this on a scanned object, I wanna show some of the really fun visual possibilities. It's taking a little while to do this because it's a multi-million polygon object, but it's slowly growing its way up the structure, deleting these polygons, and then it's gonna find its way all the way back down, totally erasing our object off the screen. And I just find that a really organic and beautiful looking effect. For projects where you're dealing with a lot of unique high polygon assets, the LOD object can dramatically speed up your viewport and keep you animating in real time. Thanks for watching. If you found this interesting or helpful, you may want to check out the rest of our What's New in Cinema 4D Release 19 videos here on Cineversity. You can subscribe or stay tuned over the next few months for more quick tips and reference videos.